think he's proving his fucking point brilliantly uh, to the point where I think it's kind of frightening. And it's, it's so well done that it, it, it almost has me... It almost has me overly paranoid to where I like look at everyone I see, no matter where I am, like even at like the supermarket, like the cashier, and wonder, could that be? No. Is there any signs you're seeing? No, 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 no. You know, it's amazing because it hit me right away. Maybe I got some, you know, intuitive help on that. But I've always aligned on, from a religious standpoint, God with the concept of truth, that God was the truth, blah, blah, blah. If that's the case... Um, then when a Messiah returns or a God returns, we're going to have a big problem. Because if God's the truth, why had he been hiding? Why had he not been around? The truth stands in the open, the light side in the darkness. The first thing people might bring up is, hey, where were you like 10 years ago? Were you not here? Now, I've seen, literally, how he plays that out. It's brilliant. I can see it in everything, whether it's the numbers that I'm seeing or that it's actually a supernatural event you know, some cosmic, you know, thing occurring in front of me, I'm like, holy shit, that's fucking God, dude. That's amazing. That's insane. That's not magic. Like, look at that. That's insane. I see these things all the time. And so um, you begin to notice it was always there. You just didn't see it. So he can always say, well, you just didn't see it. I was always there. So you can't say I'm just appearing out of nowhere that I was hiding. But from the standpoint of like, look at what I post. Okay. I mean, I'm, I, I don't come out and say any outlandish statements. But... I do some magic tricks, you know, some masters of illusion. You know, I have some help with that, some special effects. What in God's name do, would people need to see it right in front of their face? Do you at least investigate it? Oh, I definitely would. I definitely, definitely would. And I'm not saying no one has. What I'm saying is, is in today's technological world, where we have laptops, we have SoundCloud accounts, we have Facebook accounts, and people are posting. What's amazing to me is look at what people post, and then you'll post an answer, or you'll post something similar. To, to, to what they're concerned about and they're so caught in the loop they don't even realize and I'm, of course maybe they didn't see the post I'm not saying that I'm talking about for the long term campaign they don't even see what's in front of their face in other words you or me or someone else and I'm running this experiment is what I'm saying could for all they know be the Messiah because we're making bold claims we're making very religious ground spiritual deep claims I mean I've literally posted numbers and, thing, and, and, and things on there that have occurred future predictions I'm putting a little religious twist on it. And no one has once written me, are you the Messiah? I know no one would. <laughs> you know what I mean? But at the same time, when you think about it, they've been asking for something like that forever. And yet, when someone gets decorated up or dresses up in the costume of it and presents a great case for it, they haven't a fucking clue it's right in front of their face. And it's really scary because it, it makes you wonder, what else are they not seeing? And it then freaks you out, right? Totally. Totally. I mean, I'm not trying to be mean, but I use the phrase a lot, you know, and I know we're all imperfect. Trust me. If there's one thing I realize, it's not that I'm cool. It's that, damn, I've got a lot of fucking problems, but I'm cool with my problems, literally and metaphorically and figuratively, meaning I'm cool. I'm cool with it. And I'm cool. I totally got problems. My problems make me cool. So there is that, that, that aspect of being, you know, self-love, not ego. Um, you know, like I say, if you, you know, they say, if you don't love yourself, no one else will. Yeah, exactly. If I don't feel sorry for myself, if I don't do all kinds of things. I don't even want to tell you about. <laughs> no one else will. <laughs> but, um, you know, from, from the standpoint of looking at myself and looking at how I investigate things, you know, what do they say? Condemnation before investigation is what keeps people in perpetual ignorance. Well, no investigation is what keeps them in ignorance. And most of what I've been discovering is after something was shown to me. I made it a, a, a total pledge to investigate things, and that's where I find the treasures. And they're never where you think they're going to be buried. But if you don't do any digging, and if you definitely start digging in those places that you get pushed towards by, whether it be the media or just basic social constructs, uh, you're going to find things that are pieces of poo that you think are, wow, that's so amazing. But it's not the truth. You know, what, what is that? By rule of thumb, the truth, the truth is the most oppressed. In any scenario, what, what, what is the most honest and true and real is usually what gets put down, whether it's by words or physically or whatever. That is so true. And people say, you know, I don't judge a book by its cover. Uh, truth is stranger than fiction. But none of them then apply that. If truth is stranger than fiction, I automatically did the math. What? Look at strange shit. Look at the shit that's really fucking strange. It's, it's even weirder than fiction. And you're going to find, and I did. I found truth. Of course I put it through the test of trying to prove it out. 
But, you know, don't judge a book by its cover. First of all, how else are you supposed to judge a book? If you walk through the jungle and you see a lion, it's like, oh, oh I don't want to judge a book by its cover. It might be a pussycat. No, as human beings, we have to evaluate things from what we know and experience. We shouldn't ultimately judge the book by its cover just on its outward appearance. I understand that. Because eventually the book's going to start changing its cover knowing that. But people, you know, don't say what you mean and mean what you say. Uh, yeah, if you want to get shot. <laughs> people speak so much, you know, I, and I do the same shit, but at least I admit it. I'll, I'll, I'll post a brilliant quote all the time and be hypocritical against it the next minute, not even know it. But other people, they don't even apply it, except to one instance. I, I would definitely say, at least I think so, and it, it's something that keeps me up at night. Yeah, that I apply these elements of, dude, investigate, take a look. Nothing is crazy. You've learned that. They called you crazy. <laughs> you knew you weren't, and you saw things that apparently no one else was, and this is a big world, my friend. So nothing is beyond impossibility. Nothing is beyond possibility. I don't care if a homeless guy tells me Ronald McDonald is in a UFO flying down the street. I will at least go and take a look and try to get some more information before I say, hey, you're crazy, dude. Because I want to be the guy who sees it first. And you're not going to be going, yeah, whatever, and walking away. Because that's what everyone plans for you to do. That's why the CIA gives the lies to the uh, professors and the teachers. And they, they show the honest truth. They show the real pictures and investigation stuff to crazy homeless people, people on drugs. Because they'll, they'll go out and tell everyone, like, dude, you won't believe what I saw. The CIA showed me pictures of Roswell. Yeah, you're a crazy, druggy guy. So then you associate the truth with kooks. It's a can I mean, that's that's out of the textbook handbook shit from the CIA. And you, you should know that if you even watch the Discovery special thing, but you don't. What do you do? You go ahead and you go with the crowd. And as David Icke said, and as anyone knows, one thing you can guarantee yourself is going with the crowd is that in 10, 20, 30 years from now, you're going to look like the idiot. The masses are always wrong. It's always the wild, radical kook that ends up looking like a fucking hero in 30 years. Always. Tell me one time that that didn't happen. You know what I mean? Even the villains look good. 30, 40 years from now, because they were separate from everyone else. Everyone else is just part of the fucking sheeple. I hate using that term, because even that's getting cliched. But even being a rebel is being part of the sheep. You know, even the awakening itself is becoming trendy. I know, to the point where people don't even know what it means. I was awake since I was born. What does that mean? <laughs> can you can you can you do some magic for me then? Can you do, show me what you got? But no, you're you're posting about like Zionists and the Israelis. Are, Dude, we, you get you got to get so beyond that to like other planetary shit and extraterrestrial crap, which I don't even want to go there yet. And yet, you know, you're still you're still worried about Bush Cheney did 9/11. Bush Cheney were slaves. <laughs> They're like zombies, as far as I'm concerned. I was on that page in 2010. Kill Illuminati. Dude, everyone's getting set up, dude. We're all slaves, or at least one of us was. 